Hello, and welcome back to the Electrical Building Design Show. I'm your host, David Robinson. For electrical design, there are two main software packages that engineers use. You're either using AutoCAD or you're using Revit. The vast majority of electrical design happens in those two programs. I want to talk today about how we got here where we have two different programs, both by Autodesk, that are used for electrical design. The AutoCAD workflow actually goes back to the very beginning of the use of personal computers. In the early 80s is when personal computers became available. Prior to that, people were working on mainframes. One of the obvious first uses for computers, even the mainframes, was to do drafting. So you could make changes to your drawings without having to pull out an eraser and actually make changes on pencil and paper. With the advent of personal computers, people wanted to be able to do drafting at their desks as well. So there were a number of different programs that came out to facilitate this for engineers and other people doing drafting. In the 80s, there were a number of different drafting packages available. AutoCAD won out in the architectural market for architects and engineers for a number of reasons. One, it wasn't fairly economical. It wasn't terribly expensive. It was still a, an expensive piece of software, but it was uh, relatively speaking cheap. It also included AutoLisp, the scripting language that AutoCAD had. That allowed architects and engineers to write a additional customizations to make the software more efficient for themselves. So they could take their workflows and automate themselves. This allowed them to be a lot more productive. So I think that helped drive the adoption. In particular for engineers who typically had some sort of programming background, they were able to take the scripting available in Lisp and use that in AutoCAD to be that much more productive with their drafting. The drafting happened in AutoCAD and just over the course of at this point, 40 years, people became more and more efficient in AutoCAD. They continue to build up those scripting libraries and become more familiar with AutoCAD. AutoCAD evolved and became a more complete and full featured package such that at this point you have companies that have been doing AutoCAD based drafting and electrical design for 40 years and they've got really good systems built up. So you have some people who are using AutoCAD for their electrical design because they're just really efficient at this point. In the 90s as AutoCAD matured people started looking for CAD solutions that were specific to disciplines including ones that were specific to building design. One of the first of these was actually ARCHICAD, which came out in 1987. It was focused on architectural modeling and CAD. Autodesk had a number of third-party vendors writing add-ins for AutoCAD. One of them was a company called Softdesk. They did a number of different things. One was an architectural add-in for AutoCAD called Softdesk that allowed engineers and architects to do drafting and design specific to the architectural market in AutoCAD. They released a number of these third-party add-ins. The final one that they released under the Softdesk branding was Softdesk 8, which was a bit of a cult favorite among the people who used it. Softdesk 8 was released for AutoCAD release 14. There's a number of people who continued to use it for five, 10 years after it was first released on AutoCAD 14, even as AutoCAD progressed to AutoCAD 2000 in 2010, they were still running AutoCAD release 14 because they liked Softdesk 8 so much. Autodesk actually ended up purchasing Softdesk for a number of different reasons. One was for this Softdesk 8 platform that they had. They took that and they rebranded it as a couple of different programs. One was Architectural Desktop. That was the CAD program specific for architects. They also created Autodesk Building Systems. That was the MEP package for mechanical, electrical, plumbing engineers to be doing their design in AutoCAD. While Autodesk was acquiring Softdesk and coming out with Architectural Desktop, other companies were looking for ways to also get into this new architectural CAD market. So you had ArchiCAD that was still doing their stuff from the late 80s. You had Bentley coming out with various solutions as well. Then in the early 2000s, you had a new upstart, Revit, come out. And this was a venture-backed fund from some people who had done work in the mechanical space. They wanted to take what they had learned there for mechanical-based CAD software and bring it over to the architectural market. They came out in the early 2000s with this software. They very aggressively marketed against Autodesk. At the time, printed magazines still existed. There were two in the industry, Catalyst and Cadence. Revit ran a number of full page ads in those very directly attacking Autodesk is essentially an old dinosaur. You're using this AutoCAD based software that at that point was 20 years old for your architectural design and you need to get on this new platform that they had Revit for doing your electrical design. At the time, the term building information modeling was first coined and started to be used really as a marketing sense to be talking about what is essentially 
CAD for building design. There's a lot of debate as to how to define building information modeling and what that involves, but really it's a 3D model with some additional information involved in it. And the 3D portion is actually really critical to any definition of BIM. You don't really have BIM without a 3D model. And the example I give for why I believe that to really, really be true is that if you take something like SKM or Easy Power, where you have an electrical model of your building, no one would call that BIM. For an engineer, it is because it's defining the building model Model according to the electrical engineer because they don't really care about the 3d stuff but if you took that to an architect and said hey I've got my electrical BIM they would look at that and say no that's not because I can't see anything so an important and key component of BIM is the 3d modeling so you have a number of 3d modelers out in the early 2000s you've got Archicad you've got Bentley you've got Autodesk with architectural desktop and then you've got Revit and they're all fighting it out with the architects trying to decide who's going to be the one to come out on top. The engineers are at this point largely being ignored. Autodesk has Autodesk building systems, so you at least have one option available to you, but the other packages are very much focused on what the architects are doing. They're thinking a little bit about the contractors, but totally ignoring the design engineers at this point. Autodesk eventually decides that the best way to move forward is to purchase Revit. So for about $100 million, Autodesk obtains Revit. And now they have two competing packages. They've got Architectural Desktop and they have Revit. And for a number of years, they develop both of these concurrently, more or less trying to decide which one is going to win out in the market. So you have Autodesk with their two solutions and then a couple other solutions. Over time in the architectural market, Revit becomes the main player. Architects are switching over to Revit. It's seeing a lot of good development and improvements such that it becomes a really good modeler for architects over what at this point has now been 20 years because it came out about 2000. So for 20 years, Autodesk has been developing Revit and it's kind of taken the main share for building information modeling for Revit. So the other players still exist. Some architects are still using an architectural desktop. Some are working in Bentley. Some are using Archicad. So architects have a lot of different options, but really the main option for them is Revit if they want to do BIM. During this entire time, the MEP engineers are largely being ignored. The one company who is thinking about MEP engineers is Autodesk. They've got Autodesk Building Systems, which they then renamed to AutoCAD MEP, and that's what we have today. They have Revit MEP, which eventually gets folded up into Revit, so it's just part of the Revit suite at this point. So Revit includes architectural and the MEP pieces as one complete package. But Autodesk is attempting to include tools for MEP engineers engineers. The other packages aren't really, you can't take Archicad and do MEP engineering with it. They don't have those tools available. For engineers, Autodesk has been serving them. You have AutoCAD MEP, which it works and exists, but isn't getting a whole lot of new development. You've got also Revit. And if you're working with an architect who's using Revit, you're going to want to be in the same platform. And that's what drives a lot of adoption of Revit. The fact that we have MEP tools in Revit means that it is a viable option for engineers who want to do design. And that's how we ended up where we are today. Today. So you have the old workflow harkening back to the early 80s of AutoCAD based design and it's had 40 years to mature and become a very viable and productive workflow. And then you also have the Revit workflow that's the newer one. Then you also have people who have switched from that to Revit with the additional tools that that provides. It's particularly helpful if you have architects who are using Revit so that you can collaborate more efficiently in that tool set with them. The other BIM programs that exist aren't really options for MEP engineers because the tooling just isn't there. In terms of moving forward with the industry, it makes it very difficult to switch to a different BIM paradigm because it always begins with the architects. And so the architects could switch to something new, but the engineering is always lagging. So the engineers are never gonna have anything as up-to-date and as modern as what the architects are getting out of any new software developers. It makes it difficult for the engineers to keep up with the architects because if the architects have a brand new package come out, they say, hey, this is great, I wanna use this. The engineers are stuck either in the AutoCAD or the Revit workflow. If you're using a brand new package, at that point actually switching back to AutoCAD is probably going to be your easier solution because if the architect's not using Revit but is using some other BIM package, you really need to go back to something that's a little bit more generic like AutoCAD that works with whatever workflow the architect has and isn't dependent on them using Revit. For the near future, the two main workflows are going to continue to be AutoCAD and Revit. They both have their pros and cons. They're both useful and can be productive. That's what electrical engineers are going to be using. That's the history of the two workflows that we have today 
for electrical engineers. You're either going to be using AutoCAD or using Revit, depending on what your company is doing and the clients that you have. Both can be productive. Both can be useful today. Uh, it's just a matter of what is the most effective in the situation that you find yourself in.